welcome back to my channel. My name is Kasia, and as you guys can tell by the title of today's video, I'm doing an eight month puppy update and also eight things that I wish that I knew before I got a puppy. Um, so throughout this video, I'm going to go through some of the things that I wish that obviously that I would have known before I got a puppy, but also I'm going to give you guys a little bit of um, an update on exactly where Coda is currently. Um, so if you guys have not seen any of my previous videos, Coda is a Shifu, which is a Shih Tzu Poodle. Um, so he's Shih Tzu Toy Poodle. Um, he is 15 pounds now. So I cannot wait to show you guys exactly what he looks like now. Um, I know on the previous videos, he was like a really dark coat. Now he's kind of getting a little bit lighter. Like all of the things have changed at this point, but I still adore his entire life. And that's what matters. So if you guys stay tuned, you'll be able to see all of the things that I have to share. Um, but the very first thing, I do have my notebook over here because I just wanna make sure that I stay on track. Um, but the very first thing that I want to go through is um, time management and just understanding exactly what your time will now look like now. I just want to let you know that you will lose sleep, you will lose patience, you will lose furniture, you will lose shoes, you will lose, I said patience, but I'm gonna say it again. Like, <laughs> it is definitely one of the most demanding things that I've ever done in my entire life, um, but it is 100% worth it, I promise. But it is very, um, initially it's very stressful. Um, especially if you are getting a puppy and you are alone. Like if you don't have um, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or like someone who's super dependent that you can depend on to take care of your puppy in your absence. Like if you are like me and <laughs> you just have to do it essentially by yourself, like it is definitely very time consuming. Um, and you definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, if you, like for example, if you live far away from your house, keep that in mind. Like you want to make sure that you have different things in place to make sure that your your puppy or eventually your dog will be taken care of in those times um, because they still need the same attention. Um, yes, over time, as they get older, they don't necessarily need to go out as often, but they still are very dependent on playing. One of the things that I've learned um, within the past few months is that Coda has become extremely dependent on me um, and he's become much more clingy. Like when I first got him, he was kind of clingy but he was kind of not. <laughs> but like now, like he's super clingy to me. And like, for example, whenever I'm getting ready, he assumes that I'm about to leave the house and he just whines and whines and whines. And that's something that you want to consider. Like you want to consider exactly what you leaving looks like. Um, and just making sure that in your absence, they do have things to entertain them. They do have things to keep them um, occupied. They do have things to make sure that they, their brains and their bodies are still active. So. Um, at the moment, Coda has to stay in his crate when I leave the house because he has recently taken upon the activity of chewing on furniture. Um, he wasn't doing this before. Like I can leave him out before for like three or four hours. I'd come back home and he hadn't peed, he hadn't pooped, he hadn't chewed up anything. It was great. And then now, I think once he hit eight months, like he just started chewing on my chair. He chewed up some of my records. Y'all, like, <laughs> I was so pressed about that, but I got over it, I promise. Um, another thing, as far as like for Coda, like somehow he came to me already crate trained. Um, I think it was because the breeder, like she had been um, very knowledgeable on like already getting puppies crate trained. Um, so like he was always very like, dependent on being in his crate and I didn't have to like put him in there with him like whining throughout the night or anything like that. Um, he also came pretty much potty trained over the night. Over the night. Now throughout the day, he would definitely <laughs> pee on my floor and pee everywhere else um, for the first few months. But at first, um, like throughout the night, honestly he would pretty much sleep from we would go to bed about 10. He would sleep till about seven in the morning. Like, I don't know how. I cannot give you guys the tips. I cannot give you the secrets because I don't know. Like, he literally <laughs> would just stay overnight and not pee or poop in his crate. I don't know how. It's a blessing. I'm just going to accept it. So, the number two tip that I have is um, that they will have accidents. So, prepare yourself. 
Prepare yourself for all the possible accidents that they're gonna have. They're gonna poop, they're gonna pee, they're gonna vomit, they're gonna chew up things, they're gonna destroy things. Like that is literally a part of them getting acclimated to your space, getting acclimated to your life, and them also just growing up. Like, like I said before, um, Coda didn't start chewing on my furniture until he hit eight months. Like, so for the first <laughs> six months that I had him, he didn't chew up anything outside of his own toys and I don't I don't know why at eight months he just decided to start chewing on chairs but you know we are dealing with it as best as possible but um my best suggestion here is just to make sure that you have a good understanding of exactly what cleaning products you will need to take care of their messes um for me as far as like pooping and pee on the floor like Coda he will only do it sometimes he would mainly only pee in the house and that was like the most stressful thing for me because for the most part me and Coda are in this room and whenever he would pee on the floor like it would just stink up the entire room and I was just so stressed out because I bought this pee stuff that I cannot think of the name of right now but I don't think that it helped the smell like it just made it work anytime I walked into my space it would just stink and it would smell like pee even if I sprayed it and cleaned it and scrubbed it um so one of the things that I started using, I am in an apartment. I am in a in a apartment. I don't know why I said said it like that, um, but I'm in an apartment, and um, I started using baking soda and white vinegar to help get the stain out. One that helps to get the stain out. It literally lifts the pee, the urine. I don't say that. It literally lifts it out of the carpet, and you'll see it on the top, and that helps to clean it out. And then the white vinegar helps to alleviate the smell. Um, the baking soda definitely does that as well, but that has like been my go-to. The number three thing that I feel like is best um, as far as a tip is to only buy toys without stuffing. Um, like when I first got coated for some reason I was like on this thing of like buying toys that were cute and fluffy and that I felt like he wouldn't destroy even if it said indestructible. Let me show y'all because I don't know if y'all remember my previous video where I had some of the toys that said quote unquote indestructible. Let me show y'all how indestructible, how destructible they were. So this is one of them. I don't know if y'all remember this one but this is one of them and Coda has properly chewed the entire side out of it. I cannot let him play with it anymore. Luckily, I got all the stuffing back in it, but he was starting to pull out the stuffing. And it's not even like a thing of him pulling out the stuffing and just playing with it. Like, I don't mind that. That's not a problem to me. The issue is that Coda wants to swallow it. So then it comes out in his poop. And y'all, let me tell y'all, like, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I can handle. But trying to get stuffing around the poop it's it's a lot okay so just save yourselves and do not get toys with stuffing in them even this one he ripped the head off i don't i don't know what he was going through i don't know if he was angry or what but he literally chewed the head off of that one so one of the things that i've learned is just to get the toys that do not have stuffing um his favorite ones i actually found these on amazon i think i talked about these before these he has had longer than any of those toys and they are still in perfect condition he has broke the little squeakies out of them because they do have squeakies um i think he's punched a hole in those where they don't squeak anymore but he still loves this toy like this is literally still one of his favorites um and like i said as you can see it is still in great condition so just get toys that do not so look up indestructible no stuffing toys also if you are kind of on a budget and kind of in a place where like you don't want to spend a ton of money give them your old socks okay like honestly there are some days where Coda is more interested interested in a pair of socks than he is the toys y'all like it is <laughs> the most interesting thing in the world like he will I will try to play with him with anything else and he's like no no the number four tip that I have is to be aware of your pet's allergies and the allergies of your guests. Um, so one is just to be aware of your pet's allergies. So for me, um, I don't think that Coda ever actually, like he wasn't diagnosed with allergies or anything like that, but I noticed that when we would go outside in the springtime, he would always sneeze. Like he would sneeze three or four times before he would just kind of, you know, acclimate to the outside and be fine with it but he would sneeze a lot like when we first got outside 
and luckily like I said it wasn't bad enough for me to like have to take him to the doctor or anything or give him um, any medication or anything of that sort but another thing that you want to consider is the allergies of your guests so the allergies of people who come over to your place allergies of people who are just stopping by like it is equally as important as paying as paying attention to your dog's allergies um, so Koda is a Shifu as I've mentioned before um, and technically he is hypoallergenic so my mindset has always been okay so he's hypoallergenic that means that anybody who has allergies they should be able to be around him without having any issues that is not true okay like I actually had um, someone come over and they broke out um, I think her eye got super red because Koda was like trying to lick her in the face and their saliva can also carry um, enough to cause people to break out, especially if they have like a huge allergy, to, allergy towards animals. So my suggestion here is just to always make sure that you have some sort of Benadryl or some sort of allergy um, medicine around for humans, <laughs> for the people who come over, just so that way that you can help them treat whatever it is. I know that sometimes people, they forget their medication, sometimes they just assume that because the dog is hypoallergenic that they don't have dog or cat is hypoallergenic that they don't have to take their medication but um one of the things that like i said i just want to make sure i always have is some sort of benadryl or antihistamine that could help them navigate that process number five tip that i have is changes in food and diet um so this is a huge tip um this is definitely something that i feel like a lot of people should consider before they get a puppy because um, sometimes, well obviously when you get an animal, when you get a puppy, they're gonna come to you already eating a certain type of food. Now naturally, whoever the breeder is, they're gonna feed them a certain type of food. Typically, it could, I mean, depending on the breeder, it could be a cheaper brand of food. For some breeders, it's more of an expensive brand of food. Um, just keep in mind that if you do, obviously everybody knows this, if you do decide to transition them into another type of food, you want to slowly trans transition them into a different type of food because it makes sure that it doesn't upset their stomachs. Um, you don't want to just abruptly change their diet. So that is a huge point to take away. Um, but also just keep in mind that if you do decide to change your food, do a ton of research on the food and how the food affects your breed of dog. Um, there are some foods that are better for different breeds than others. So um, for me, fortunately, the same food that Coda came to me eating is the same food that I buy. It is expensive. <laughs> it's much more expensive than um, a lot of different brands of food, but it's worth it in my opinion because one, he loves it. Like he is literally obsessed with that food, but also um, it has a, tons of, a ton of different benefits for his health and his overall growth. The number six tip that I have is to always, always, always research the treats that you give your pup. Um, I feel like this is a huge deal because um, some treats, especially, I, I think, obviously, I think people know, people have like a pretty common understanding of exactly like the type of foods that you can give your animal and how those can be harmful or good for your pet. But treats, you can find treats little, you can find treats pretty much anywhere. And there's a ton of companies who push out different treats and they, you know, advertise them as being super healthy. But if you look on the back, they have a ton of different things in them. Um, and they are usually things that are not great for your puppy's overall health. So always look at the ingredients on the back of your treats. Always pay attention to that type of stuff. Um, but also consider, just consider, um, there are different treats that you can give your pet that aren't necessarily just puppy treats that you can find in the store. So your pets can eat different veggies and fruits. And this is like a huge thing that Coda loves. Coda loves bananas, he loves blueberries, he loves mangoes, um, he loves a ton of different fruits and veggies. Number seven tip that I have is um, just to keep a track of their interaction um, with other puppies and other humans. Um, so for me, I feel like this was a lot more difficult and this is probably, where it's, probably why it's definitely a tip that I have. Um, it's because, so I got Coda in February, COVID hit in March and obviously because I wasn't interacting with people face to face, Koda was not able to interact with people face to face. So this made it where anytime he first meets anybody, like he is extremely hyper. Um, and 
for some people they're like oh it's fine I can I can handle it but I've noticed that for other people sometimes that can be a lot like his energy level can be a lot um, and I believe that it is definitely connected to the fact that he didn't get a lot of that interaction up front while he was a lot younger um, so I am encouraging you all to make sure that you definitely allow your pet to have interaction with other animals um, and definitely other humans outside of yourself so that way that whenever they go to go hang out with other people they're not super hyper they're not super you know because I mean obviously whenever they're super hyper they're gonna pee they're gonna poop they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna bite like they're gonna do all different types of things that can be um, seen as like a bad thing to other people who are not around your animal on a daily basis so you just want to make sure you take those things into, into consideration and last but not least is leash pulling this is definitely something that I feel like you should consider before you get a pup because it is honestly of all the things that I've mentioned on this on this list this is the thing that stresses me out the most is like whenever me and Cody go outside is that he will like pull his leash um to the point where he almost chokes um, and I noticed that in my other video when I mentioned that, everybody was like, well, get him a harness. Cody has a harness. He has always had a harness. And he's still, like, that's that's how hard he pulls on it. That even though he has a harness, he will literally still choke himself. Um, and I feel like over time, we've gotten much better with it. We've gotten, you know, better acclimated with it. I feel like he's been able to navigate it a little bit better. But he's definitely gotten to the point where like if it's something that he wants to get to or a person that he wants to get to or another pet that he wants to get to like he will risk choking himself to get to whatever that is so um here my suggestion is just to especially and I, I wish this was something that I did is that I looked up leash pulling a lot earlier because I didn't really pay attention to the leash pulling videos because I just assumed that that wouldn't necessarily be an issue that he would have um but look up leash pulling videos now look up leash pulling tips now because they will give you some ways to because I feel like if you are able to train them while they're younger to navigate these things that it will kind of transition as they get older so now that I'm trying to do it while he was I think in the first video I posted like it was like four months even then he was very independent <laughs> and very stubborn and you know not really listening that well um, so even then, like I said, he was still leash pulling, but now I feel like he's gotten to a point where he doesn't do it as often. It's not as bad, but it's definitely to a point where like we have to, what I'll do is like for me, my tip, especially if your pet is a little bit older, um, and they're still doing leash pulling, is just to stop, tell them to come here and just wait. I literally will not walk anywhere until he comes to me and he calms down. And then once he comes to me, we calm down we'll keep walking. And if he keeps pulling, we'll stop again. So like I said, it goes back to the first tip. It's just to have an understanding of patience. Um, definitely have a ton of uh, just time to just take out to do those different things. Because now for me, walking does not take just a few minutes. Sometimes it can take, I mean, it's not gonna take an hour, but depending on exactly what I'm trying to train him to do at that time or that day, it can take a little bit of time just to kind of navigate whatever that situation is so alrighty so last but not least I just wanted to do a really really quick puppy update on my little shawty um, if you guys have not seen this is Coda this is my baby this is my boy these are my shoes you okay you want to talk about it? okay um, this is Coda um, Coda is eight months like I said, he is 15 pounds. He is a sheepu. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, can, can I show you all? Can Mama show you all? Can, her, can I show you all? Do you care? Okay. I just want you guys to see like how big he's gotten now, um, especially in comparison to his last video. And get, get you guys just to see um, his coat now. He's definitely a little bit lighter. He's definitely gotten to the point now where he's like kind of grayish versus black, but he's still beautiful in my eyes. <laughs> But yeah, um, I just want to give you guys like a really, really quick update on Coda. Um, like I said, he is 15 pounds now. He is getting to the point now where he is like much more clingy than he was before. Um, 
and that is definitely something that I saw on like the different websites as far as like traits that are associated with sheep foods like he definitely has like a lot of separation anxiety now like I said whenever I try to get dressed or if he sees me like pull my hair down he's like she's leaving <laughs> like I can tell she's leaving because my hair is always tied up these days but he's like I can tell that she's about to leave the house and he just gets so frustrated and just gets so upset and now he's trying to chew on my fingers but yeah um my suggestion is just to make sure that you pay very very close attention to the you know uh the temperament of your pup the temperament of the dog that you're interested in and just see if that's something that you can handle um for me i wanted a dog that would depend on me i wanted a dog that would want to cuddle and stuff like that for some people that's not what they want so definitely pay attention to those different types of things before you um purchase an animal just so you know exactly what you're getting um for me i knew that coda like i said was going to be a cuddler and wanted to be very clingy and it just took him some time to get to that point but now he is very clingy <laughs> he is much a lover boy um but yeah um i just wanted to take this time just to show you guys coda just so you can see him a little bit but also if you guys have any questions or anything that you are waiting for me to kind of talk about as far as like having a puppy or having a sheep food. That was your big yarn. You want tires? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, if there's anything that you are waiting for me to talk about that I haven't talked about yet, I know there's one person who asked me about um, exactly how I was able to navigate with working and having a puppy and it was a little bit easier than for most people because like I said, I got COVID in February and COVID hit in March and I started working from home in March. So um, honestly, I only had to like drive home during my lunch break and stuff like that um, for the month of February. But once, so while I did have to navigate back home and stuff like that, um, essentially what I would do is I would just make sure I would leave as late as possible to get to work on time. Um, take a lunch break to come and take him out and feed him because at that time he was still eating three times a day and then make sure as soon as I got off that I headed straight home and that was just the best way um, sometimes if I felt like he drank too much water on his lunch break or in, for breakfast I would just ask my roommate to take him out um, just again before she leaves but for the most part he would be fine like I said somehow I got a puppy that was pretty much already crate trained um, to the point of not peeing or pooping in his crate. Um, but he would pee and poop on my floor because he was disrespectful at the time. But um, over time, like I said, he just got very much acclimated with everything. So um, like I said, if you guys have any more questions about anything as far as like puppies or anything that you guys want me to post, like I'm happy to do it. Like I said, I'm trying to be a lot more consistent with posting videos and stuff like that. So. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. I just want to keep chewing on my fingers. And I don't want him to. Can you stop? Damn, stop. Toes. Oh, oh, white. Damn, stop. Damn, stop. No? Okay. Oh, okay. Him do not want to sit down. Okay, let's try on this side. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Say bye. To say bye. To. Oh. Look, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look. Say bye bye. <laughs> See you guys next time.